Howdy friends, my name is Wes Lee. Thanks for stopping by my shop, The House of Tone. I started a YouTube channel to show what my life is like as a band instrument repair technician. I appreciate you coming around. So today's video is a trumpet that we're working on. It's marching band season, so we've got a doozy. Now in the other video, I was talking about the P50 tool that I was using for the tuba knuckle dents. So today, what the tool was actually made for is what I'm going to show. And we're going to work on this trumpet, and I got something else to unveil to you. Let's jump right in. Today's victim, or unfortunate soul, is this lovely king trumpet, but we've got some bell issues. Some dents, whatnot. We've already gotten it chem flushed. What we're going to be discussing in the first part of the video is this dent. So for this bell tail dent, we're going to use this, this tool. This is the P50 from Freeze Tools. What I like about this tool is I can use it on everything from cornet, trumpet, mellophone, marching baritones. It takes the tiny, small graduated set. These are in five thousandths. But then, when on the bigger instruments, when I have to use the barrel-shaped dent balls, I can use any of those as well. They, everything just threads on, so there's no problem with it. So I really like this tool a whole lot. Okay, so let's get after it. Uh, this operation for this is exactly the same uh, for the, as for the knuckle dents. We're going to put a little valve oil down. We're going to come with an undersized ball first and we're going to tap these hard creases so let's get at it this is wes's fancy valve oil it's my custom blend push this in to make this stop we're there you can see it's starting to make contact I just want to lightly Give it some nudges, see if it'll pop through. Now, we've got some hard creases. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our dent hammer, and I want to smooth those. I'm not whacking on it. I'm just trying to smooth out. It's called a planishing action in my motion I'm actually trying to push those ridges back towards the center Okay, and then I'm going to try to drive it just a little bit more. Okay, so now I know I'm about at my size. Flip that one off. Okay, I'm going to drop back. And my stopper's not going to get caught on that buckled up bell flare. Oh, yeah. I'm just working these creases. So I'm taking the undersized dent ball from the deepest part of the dent. So I'm trying for it only to affect the deepest part of the dent. Meanwhile, I'm tapping the top. So we're, we're trying to do this with it. Push this down and bring this back up. And as, you round, as the part gets round again, then the balls will pop on through just a few nudges yep that popped through now we're right on it and we're right at size so the edges of that
you can hear I'm still not making contact with the ball and that's intentional. Oh, there it was. Okay, now that I've made, now you can hear that I'm hitting the dent ball with my rawhide mallet. back out and I want to go back to my small one I'm actually I left some dent right there so I want to go I want to go back and get that right now sometimes you have to you have to go backwards a little bit I ever, have I ever talked about what it is that I'm looking for when I'm hammer tapping? So when I'm hammer tapping, I'm trying to see a straight light line. And you'll often see me rotating. And what I'm looking for is just clean lines, a non-broken light line. I'm really not just hitting to be hitting. Hammer tapping is an art. It is a definite skill that you pick up over time. You're warming up the molecules of the brass so that you can just push it wherever you want it to go. Now, if you, as you look across that, See, it's just nice and clean. Mm -hmm. But then look, when you come here, you see how it flattens out? Can you see that? Right in here? Mm -hmm. It flattens out. And so that's, now we'll drive another ball through and that will, as we get the creases out and we drive a ball through, it'll bring it back. It'll bring it back up. But by doing it this way, you're, you're going slow and you're making sure that the parts stay round. You want that tubing to be round, just like it was originally. And it doesn't take much force. There we go. Light lines look good. Don't even have that much hammer tapping left to do. Now, my favorite part. A little bit of grease. And the burnisher. And you come across the top. It takes any residual high spots and blends them in. And there you go. <laughs> so we've gotten our bell tail taken care of, turned out great. Now we return our attention to the bell itself. This is pretty damaged. The bell rim is all bent up. We have a lot of flare damage. Time for a short story. Faree's Tools reached out to me and asked if I had a bell mandrel. And I said, no, I don't have a bell flare mandrel. It's always something that I've wanted. They're expensive. Shipping would be crazy expensive. So no, I use other things. I most often use my knee or come up with other ways. Their response was, Hey Russ, we've got a cool tool for you to check out. So, they sent me a prototype. It looks 
like it is super heavy. It is some kind of space age polymer that is like real hard. I've dropped it. I've hit it with hammers trying to break it. Um, and this scene is real cool. And it's got this cutout. Why do you ask? I'm going to show you. So let's get on fixing this bell. Let's look at some cool tools. And let's have a good time. So how a bell flare mandrel works is the rim should set against the edge of this. And so you just work your way around and working it down. I use a rubber mallet or plastic. A lot of times you'll see me working off of my workbench. I have to be careful so I don't go too far. With this mandrel, it allows me to come down much, much quicker and get this straightened out. Now, you see this? That gap and how the rim is humped, that's what this cutout is for. It actually allows that section of rim, the wire in here, to go down and then come back up into shape because metal has memory. Another thing that's really cool about this being a polymer, it's not going to scratch the silver. So it's, this is a cool updated version. A little bit more here, but I'm going to go ahead and take care of this dent first. So time for the roller. I get questions why I use wax paper on my roller. I do it when I'm working on silver plated instruments or silver instruments in general. Sometimes I do it with lacquer, but the steel doesn't mar. So that wax paper leaves all this residue, but as soon as you spray it and wipe it off, and you didn't you didn't scar the finish up. And in fact, it helps with the scars that would have been there. So inside the bell.
There we go. Okay, now we got to do all of these dents. All that's left to do is everything. I'm here. Here. And here. Just got to seek and destroy. Or well, shout out to my Canadian friend Ernie laying some pipe with a hook burnisher. <laughs> so here's our project. Bell tail's gone, all the dents removed. Minimal scarring from the crushed bell flare. Came out really nice. When I put it back together, I will be giving it a high polish buff. These are the tools that I use today. I'll put part numbers for all of these tools in the description so you can go to Faree's Tools and talk to them about getting yourself some. I didn't use any heavy machines today. The P71P Bell Flare Mandrel. That is a cool tool. Thanks for stopping by the House of Tone today. That project turned out really nice. Special shout out to Faree's Tools for sending me a prototype to try out. I absolutely love it. This one is sold for sure. Thanks everybody for watching the videos, commenting, sharing them around. I'm amazed at how the channel is growing. I thought it was going to be just me recording stuff for my own posterity after I'm gone. It's a very cool way to interact with people, and I appreciate y'all. This is Wesley, signing out.